Welcome to this video on how to assemble a print book cover, part 1. The aim of this video is to set up a file which will become the container for your print book's cover. This will be useful if you are working with print-on-demand companies like Lulu or Blurb, as well as local printing companies that might be printing a large number of copies for you. We are going to use InDesign version CS6, but you'll find the latest Creative Cloud version is very similar. To start with, Check InDesign is going to display your preferred units of measurement, such as millimetres or inches. To do this on a Windows system, go to Edit, Preferences and Units and Increments. If you're on a Mac system, go up near the top left hand corner of the screen to InDesign, then Preferences, then Units and Increments. When you click, you'll find a dialog box like this. The very first time you use InDesign, it might default to Pikers, which is a traditional printing unit, but we want to change these to either inches or millimetres. In fact, I think inches decimal is the better of the two if you're working in inches, but today we're going to work on millimetres, both horizontal and vertical. Change them and click OK, and then let's open a new document. You can use the Create New Document if you've got this option in the middle, or go up here to File, New, and Document to open this dialog box. Most of the action in this video happens in this dialog box. The document preset, that will change in a minute from default once we start altering things below. Keep the intent to print. The number of pages, you only need one page for this file, for this one cover file. So here, facing pages is irrelevant because we only have one page, so you can uncheck the box. Likewise, start page number at one. Well, just keep it at that. Don't worry about primary text frame. But the page size, this is something to think about. I'm going to suggest that our book's pages are A5 portrait, so upright. This means if we want a front cover and a back cover, we're going to have two A5 portrait sizes, which is the equivalent of A4 landscape. Watch the width and height change when I swap the orientation from portrait to landscape. Okay, the only thing we haven't accounted for there is the spine width in between. And let's say the spine width is 10 millimeters. How do we get 10 millimeters? You've either used the spine width calculator on a company's site like Lulu or Blurb, or you've spoken with a printing company, and you will have had to have worked out exactly how many pages are in your book, and also the type of paper that will be used for printing. But let's say it's 10 millimeters, so let's add 10 millimeters to the width of the page. We can click or type it straight in, up to 307 from 297. This will make more sense when you see how the file turns out. To demarcate the front and the back cover, put in two columns. So from one to two columns, and in between the two columns is the gutter, which is going to function as the spine, so we'll bump that up to 10 millimetres. Now move on to the margins. We don't want any margins because we want the image and all the colours to come right up to the edge of the page. So click in here, make it zero, and then if you want the others to follow suit, just click on this link icon, see how they all went to zero. The final element we need to introduce is bleed. You might need to click up near the top right on more options to see the bleed and slug options. Now the bleed is an excess or overhang beyond the edge of the page. This is so when the page is cut, if there's any error and where the blade hits, it doesn't matter exactly where it cuts because there'll be room for error with the bleed. So you won't end up with a, a little white streak of the card showing through on one of the edges. So let's put in three millimetres. That's typically the size put in by most printing companies. Click on the link icon to put it all around. Now that's the equivalent of about an eighth of an inch. You may have to do it up to five millimetres with some companies, but for most print-on-demand companies, it'll be three millimetres. You can ignore slug. Slug is a bit like a bleed on a bleed. You can go up near the top right hand corner and click OK. Now what we've done may make more sense. On the right hand side here, we have an A5 column that will be our front cover. On the left hand side, we have an A5 rectangle, which will be the back cover. And this column in the middle will become the spine. Do you see how it works out now? Go to the edges where the purple line is, and you'll see that this is the edge of the cover. 
and a little bit further out, in fact, three millimeters further out, is a red line that goes all the way around, and that is the edge of the bleed. So now let's save this. We'll go to File and Save and give it a, an original title like book cover. You'll see it saving as an InDesign CS6 document. Click Save. And we are now done and ready to create the front cover. Thank you for watching and please remember to comment, like or subscribe if you'd like to view more videos about indie book publishing.